What is groundwater? Groundwater is the water within the ground. Similar to water moving through a sponge, water fills spaces within the soil and rock, creating saturated zones within the earth. Some of the soil, sand, gravel, and rock that make up the crust of the earth are porous, fractured, and faulted, creating spaces for water and air to occupy. Gravel, sand, and sandstone are excellent materials for water to occupy because they are porous or have the property of porosity. Porosity refers to the spaces air and water may occupy. Groundwater is the water that fills these spaces. Porous areas of material that contain significant amount of water are called aquifers. Aquifers allow us to use groundwater. Groundwater is complex and interesting because water is a polar molecule. In other words, it behaves like a magnet. With both a positive and a negative pole, it is attracted to itself and other surfaces. These magnetic or polar qualities in water behave in ways we call cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion describes water's attraction to itself and adhesion describes its attraction to other surfaces. When water wicks up surfaces such as this tissue, it is called capillary action, which is a combination of both cohesion and adhesion. Porosity, capillary action, and gravity affect groundwater flow. Groundwater is part of the water cycle. It is the largest volume of accessible fresh water. Recharge of groundwater occurs when water infiltrates into the soil. Roughly 70% of the precipitation that falls on land in the U.S. evaporates, while the remaining 30% is absorbed into the ground or travels across land as runoff into surface water such as rivers and lakes. It is a portion of this 30% of precipitation water that becomes groundwater and may recharge aquifers. Groundwater can be very complicated. Systems of permeable layers, layers that water can pass through, such as sandstone, fractured rock, or soil, and impermeable barrier layers, layers that water does not flow through readily, such as clay or non-porous rock, help dictate where groundwater flows. Complexities of soil and rock Water availability create many variations in groundwater systems. Here we have a porous layer of sand, an impermeable layer of clay that happens to have a few leaks on the side allowing water to pass the impermeable clay layer at certain points, and a porous gravel layer below the clay. As water is added, you can see how it moves through the materials. By adding dye, we can visualize this movement better. Additionally, we can see that the dye originating from one point in the system spreads throughout, and we may utilize the dye to better understand how pollutants can spread within groundwater, ruining a valuable source of fresh water. When we add another variable, a pump, like a water well, we can see how this alters the flow and availability of groundwater and may spread or collect pollutants. Groundwater is a source of about 40% of the total U.S. public water supply. About 99% of rural drinking water is groundwater. Groundwater also helps grow our food. It supplies 39% of agricultural water, the irrigation water that grows our crops. Let's recap some of what we have learned about groundwater. When we look around outside, we see the surface of the earth. We know the dirt or soil beneath the grasses and trees is there. Below the dirt is rock, bedrock, part of the upper portion of the earth's crust. Dirt, bedrock, and other materials such as sand and gravel have spaces, pores, cracks, and fractures for water to move through and be stored within. These porous rock, sand, and gravel formations that hold water are called aquifers. Aquifers are rock or sediment that is porous or permeable enough to hold quantities of water in large enough amounts for human extraction using a water well. Aquifers, or groundwater, often interact with their surroundings by adding or receiving water. Here is an example of groundwater feeding water to a stream. The groundwater table is up above the stream, and the water with gravity is flowing down through the ground into the stream. This aquifer is receiving water from the stream. The stream bed is above the aquifer, and water is infiltrating down through the stream bed into the aquifer. Groundwater interacts with the surface in many ways. Here is Emily's spring next to Georgetown Lake, where the groundwater is bubbling up to the surface and making this pond. Sometimes the groundwater that reaches the surface is not enough to make a pond or a visible stream. At the Flint Creek Campground near Phillipsburg, Montana, it's easy to identify a line in the vegetation with dry rocky soil exposed through sparse upland vegetation. Down below are lush green sedges and rushes. Vegetation coverage is an excellent indicator for the presence of groundwater. 
South of Big Timber at Natural Bridge, the Boulder River runs over and through the limestone. Cavernous limestone is called karst. We see the limestone riverbed, then the river is gone, flowing underground. It reemerges a little further from the limestone cliff, only to disappear once again, leaving a dry, canyonized riverbed with trees growing inside. There are other ways you may find groundwater interacting with the surface, such as wading in a stream and feeling water that is either warmer or colder than the stream. If you follow this different temperature water, you may find a groundwater source entering the stream. That's all on groundwater. Thank you from CFWEP and get out and enjoy the beautiful place you live.